I'm here today with the X3 M40R. It's quite a fun little car, performance version of the X3. It's not quite the full-blown X3M. Competes with the likes of the GLC 43, the Tiguan R, cars of that nature. At a starting price of 1.2 million Rand, it's not exactly a super saver. However, we're gonna see today if it justifies that price. Because I'm ADHD and this is ADHD does cars. Over here at the front, I think it's actually quite a good looking car. Now, most people don't really like it, but each to their own, I guess. You have a nice big front grille, M badge, these aggressive looking headlights, they are matrix LEDs, so that's a plus. There are a couple of fake vents and whatnot down here. These ones are real though, but overall, I think it's quite a good looking car. Moving down the side of the X3, it looks like any other X3, except for a couple of performancey bits. There are lines and creases that go on the full length of the car. You get these roof rails that are blacked out. All the rims of the windows are blacked out. You get these aerodynamic window mirrors as the M badge, the classic M Sport M badge, fins and gills and whatnot. And it's sitting on these 21 inch wheels that I think look pretty good. The standard X3 does come down on 20s, which I think are fine. But overall, I think it looks quite good on the 21s. Speaking of the M badges, you get the feeling that BMW is trying to get you to feel a certain emotion with whatever angle you look at this car from. And that emotion would be, mmm, and here we come to my favorite angle of the car, which is the rear. The lines continue on from the outside all the way through to the back. You have this boot lip spoiler, you have these nice new headlights, you have these massive exhaust surrounds, which are really, really big. There is a little bit of fakery going on here. These vents don't go anywhere. This diffuser doesn't do anything. But overall, I think it looks quite nice from the back. Something about these rear lights that I don't think you'll be able to unsee once you see it. They really look like those laser swords from Halo. Moving on to the boot of the X3, it's quite spacious in here. It's got a capacity of around 550 liters. There's no load lip, so it's easy to bring things in and out. You also have these scuff plates. However, there is a little bit of a lip at the back here, so you might scratch the paint as you get further over if you're lifting heavier items. In terms of practicality back here, there's plenty. I mean, these hooks, they move along these rails, so there's different tie-down points. There's tie-down points here on the sides, here in the front. There's also these hooks on the side for your groceries if you need them. There's the load cover, which I must say does feel quite premium. But yeah, it's easy to move out of the way. Over here, you have a 12 volt socket as well. If you need to plug in a small mini fridge or whatnot, there's also underflow storage as well. There's quite a lot of it. So there's plenty of space for any extras. Overall, it's a very practical boot. The interior of the X3 is quite BMW-ish. What I mean about that is BMW has always had a very similar design language across all its models for a vast number of years. So if you get into a BMW interior, you know you're getting into a BMW interior. The build quality in here is what you really notice. Nothing that isn't supposed to move, moves, which is a plus. There are a couple of little scratchy plastics the lower down you get, but all the stuff you touch up here on the dash, up on the door sills, you know, all of it is just really, really well finished. As you can see, one thing that makes me happy, buttons for the climate control and funnily enough for the radio. This interior design language is starting to look a little bit dated. BMW has recently improved their designs though, so they've recently upgraded to a big screen that stretches across the front. But what they have here is still plenty good enough. You have fully digital driver's display, nice big 10 inch touchscreen with the BMW infotainment system, which the BMW infotainment system has always been really, really good. The one thing I do miss on a lot of cars though, which they've all seem to have gotten rid of is the swivel wheel. It's so much easier to control when you're driving along. You don't have to worry about fiddling around, trying to balance your hand and whatnot. You just click around on the swivel wheel, left, right, up, down, and you can click. It's easy enough to adjust the menu, the displays, everything. So yeah, they should bring back the swivel wheel. The buttons on the steering wheel feel really nice. I'm happy they're not the touch sensitive buttons. You have to click them, which so you always know you're hitting the right one. 
There's plenty of storage space in here. The door bins particularly are ginormous. There's cup holders here. There's a little cubby underneath here with a USB-C adapter here in the front. There's a standard USB cable adapter. There's also a little slot for your keys, which I didn't know this car had, but it's pretty cool that it's there anyway. There's also a 12 volt socket and a wireless charger as well. This slides closed if you want to cover up all that paraphernalia as well. As you can see, this car is fitted with the two-tone leather on the inside. I personally really like the brown. It's not everybody's favorite. You do get other options. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really, really nice interior. So this car was lent to me by a viewer. So I can't really do much with the back seats, as you can see, as it has three child seats in it. So you're going to have to take my word for it that the back seats are really spacious and quite comfortable. Here at the heart of this M40i is BMW's flat six engine. Puts out 380 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, and powers all four wheels via an eight speed auto gearbox. Nice. So, driving the X3 M40i, it's a very comfortable car right off the bat. The suspension, however, is quite hard so you do find yourself feeling a lot more bumps than you would expect driving an SUV like this but it's not unbearable you don't feel like your back is going to break the steering itself is quite stiff there are a few dead spots early on so for example if I'm cruising along the road here and I'm shaking the steering wheel and not much is happening only once you really like intentionally turn the steering wheel does anything really happen the main complaint i have with the driving experience of this car would have to be the brakes in a big performance suv like this you expect the brakes to be well performance brakes but i'm touching the brake pedal and i'm pressing it in and nothing's happening the car is barely slowing down if anything it's slowing down off of its own weight i don't know if you can hear that but I'm pressing the pedal and not much happens. And in a performance SUV, you want that trust in your brakes. And I don't find myself putting all that much faith in these brakes. Even when you do press down on the pedal quite hard, they don't bite as much. They're actually quite spongy. The performance and throttle response in this, when you're in comfort mode is all right. It's not nothing major. You put your foot down and there we go. So. It takes a second to get onto the power, but once it gets on the power, it really throws you into it. It definitely lives up to the title of a performance SUV. Turning circle, I'm just gonna do a quick turn around here, see if I can make it all the way. No. However, the turning circle in this is not massive. It's actually quite a tight turning circle. It's, it is actually rather impressive. So in terms of performance numbers, this car has very similar numbers to a certain sports car I test drove a couple of weeks ago. If you want to see that video, check out the pop-up banner in the top right corner. So the claim 0 to 100 time in this car is roughly four and a half seconds. But this is a big SUV. So let's see if it can do it. Let's go. and that's a hundred it's quick it's definitely quick one thing you need to be careful of when you're driving it around in sports mode is the throttle response is pretty immediate why is that a problem basically you need to be careful of when you're on and off the power it's because it is so instantaneous I mean you put your foot down and the car jerks forward so you need to be careful of how you manage your power if you're going to cruise around in sports mode. Whack it into comfort mode, it's a much more gradual build. It's not as big of a concern. Put it into sports mode, however, and all of a sudden the throttle response is greatly improved and you do have that jerky accelerator pedal. So you need to watch how you manage the power. The one thing this car does quite scarily with its power is it's such an an assuming increase that you find yourself above the speed limit way before you realize. I've caught myself while driving this above the speed limit, shouldn't really admit that, but it's true. And it's completely unintentional. You drive the car and all of a sudden you're above the speed limit and you haven't tried to get there at all. 
you find yourself sitting at 100 k's an hour feeling like you're cruising at 60. It's a well insulated car there's not that much road noise you do get a little bit of wind noise here and there but if I didn't have the heads up display in front of me warning me that I'm above the speed limit all the time I would never know and that might wind up hurting the wallet every now and then. Another thing you realize about this is that it hides its weight quite well. So yes, it's a performance SUV, so you kind of expect it to, but you do get a lot of cars that hit crazy performance numbers, but feel heavy, they feel big. And especially when you're steering them, you feel the whole car lean and you're almost terrified that when you turn the corner, the whole car is gonna go flying off the road. With this, you don't, especially when you're in sports mode and the car hunkers down and you feel the adaptive dampers stiffen the suspension you feel like you're a lot more confident to throw it into bends here and there. So the claimed fuel consumption is roughly 8.9 liters per 100 Ks. And I'm averaging around 14.1. Granted, I have been thrashing this car quite a bit, but 14.1 is a far off claim from 8.9. So before I drove this car, I always figured, you know, why not spend the extra and get the X3M? After driving this, I still I could make an argument for buying this over the X3M. Yes, the X3M has a bit more aggressive styling and more power and a bit more road presence, but this is easily quick enough for a performance SUV. It's comfortable, you get all the same practicality, you get all the same creature comforts, and you feel like you're in a premium performance SUV. Yes, the X3M will be slightly quicker, but how often are you really gonna use that speed? And another thing about this is, like with how the speed increases, it's unassuming, it's a sleeper car. If you showed this and the X3M to a person who didn't even know what an M badge was, they would hardly be able to tell the difference. So it's hard to justify spending that much more for the full-blown X3M than it is for the price of this. So my impression of the X3M40i. Styling-wise, I'd give it a six out of 10. With its facelift, it got some new upgrades, but it's not the most exciting styling and I know it's not a lot of people's favorite either. For performance, I'll give it a six out of 10. It's definitely a fast car. However, it's not leaps above its competition and you get other SUVs that do have better performance numbers. Comfort comes in at a seven out of 10. The car is well laid out with a comfortable and practical interior. The stiff suspension brings it down a few points, but overall it's a pleasant car to drive. Lastly, value with a score of six out of 10. The SUV is on the more expensive side, however in the bracket of performance SUVs it is a good option compared to its rivals in terms of specs versus overall price. This leaves us with an average score of 6 out of 10. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more car reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.